Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stefan Zöllig. I'm coming from Switzerland, from Europe. For those who of you who maybe don't know Switzerland, <laughs> we, uh, I don't know. Many, many people come, um, mix it up with Sweden, but Switzerland is its own country. Um, and the picture I'm showing to you, it's not from Switzerland. It's a, a, a vision we have. We do have uh, in Manhattan. We want to build timber high-rise buildings. It's not a photo. It's really something we, we did on, on the computer. And what, that's what we want to show to you. So what you usually see is columns and beams and something on top of it, like CLT, for example. We want to go further. We want to make only columns and slabs and nothing else. And that's our vision. And I will show you what we did so far for this vision. I'm coming actually out of a, a timber engineering company. It's my company. I founded uh, 21 years ago in Switzerland. We are now 35 employees. We're in four branches in Switzerland and in Austria. And out of that, we developed this TS3, this Timber Structures 3.0 um, system. So actually, we are, we are timber engineers. We know quite good what uh, timber engineering is. We do about uh, 250 to 300 projects every year. And also, at the same time, we are working on about 250 to 300 projects. So we are quite well organized that everything goes uh, one beside the other. We do timber engineering, as you might know. We do also building physics, and we do product development, as I'm now, um, in the next 20 minutes, um, I'm telling you. The projects of TimberTech are from really small, uh, single-family houses uh, to commercial, to residential, to school buildings, industrial, whatever you can imagine, which can build, be built in, in uh, any time it can be built in any material, can also, we can do that in timber. And in Switzerland, I don't know how it's here, but in Switzerland, we can do it at the same price. So it's not the price question. That's interesting because it was not like that uh, 20 years ago. So we developed quite much our capacity in the, in the companies. There are also some Swiss uh, subcontractors here, and they develop their skills and their capacities in a, in a very good way. So this is the biggest building in Switzerland we are working on so far. It's a 300 apartment, about 300,000 square feet, about 30,000 square meters uh, uh, residential. In the in first floor is uh, commercial, and then five floors residential. It's in Winterthur, and I think it's also one of the biggest buildings, uh, timber buildings in the world. I didn't see, didn't see a bigger one before. Maybe you can show me one, and then... I will accept that. So at least I know it's the biggest timber building in Switzerland, but not for a long time. Then the next is coming. We are now, this is nearly finished. The next is coming up in about uh, two years. We are planning now. It's 330 apartments and eight stories high. Also in Winterthur, which is close to Zurich, rather in the, in the center of Switzerland. You also see the picture. As we understand um, timber construction in Switzerland, you don't see any timber anymore. In the inside, it's exposed to the ceiling you can see, but the rest is covered with uh, gypsum boards. And here from the outside, it's covered by a Lukabond facade. Um, this is rather normal in Switzerland. You often don't see the timber, but it is timber inside here, about uh, 10,000 cubic meters of timber inside this building. So let's switch over from timber tech to TS3. I just wanted to see that, that you see that we understand something about timber because what we see, you see now, maybe you may doubt it a little bit. So now we are talking about TS3. TS3, Timber Structure 3, is a new company, a startup and spin-off of the old company because the, 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 the business is different, the risks are different, the capital we needed is different, so we had some investors to help us uh, to, uh, to do the investment and uh, to do all this research which was nece necessary. We are actually only three employees, the top three. The bottom two, there's not employees. These are PhD students which are working for our company for three years in two major uh, research projects. OK, why are we here? In timber construction, we face something you always face if you are doing timber construction. We have actually four major challenges. First challenge is timber is just bearing in one direction. So you always make drawings like this, 
with these arrows, where do I um, put my, for my, my charges and it's always going in one direction. Even if you use DLT panels, it's still bearing from, from A to B, from wall to beam, from beam to beam, from wall to wall. And the second challenge is you have, if you are bearing from beam to beam, you have obviously these beams, and this is maybe quite normal, but as soon as you make the mechanical installation, as you see here, you have problems. You don't know where to put it for the first use, you know it, but if there is a change in use, as we always face, uh, after 10 years, after 20 years, a business is not running anymore, or another business is, is different, maybe you change from office to, to residential, whatever, and then the, 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 the tubes are not in the right place anymore. So there is, for example, the canton of Bern, which is like a state inside of Switzerland, they they require 30% of reserve for inst me uh, mechanical installation. And you will see, where do you put now this 30% in reserve? You can't, because you don't know where. So you, you just make some holes, but if, I'm sure they are in the wrong diameter, the wrong distance, wrong place, maybe wrong angle. You're always in the, in the wrong place. So we think we shouldn't do these beams at all. We should have a flat surface. We can do that, but then you have steel beams. With, the, with timber, you cannot do so, so uh, narrow beams. So we use um, steel beams, and these are a, give a mix of material. Also, if, if we use uh, concrete slabs on top or, or concrete on top of the, of the timber, as we, as we made several times, and uh, we try to avoid both of these. So um, as you see, this mix of materials, we don't, we don't like them. This is a project, it's not from us. And you see, in my opinion, it goes in the right direction. I stole these this pictures from the internet, but just to show you, this, I think this is the future of timber construction. So the, um, is anybody here who did something on this building? Uh, as a, I do apologize to, to steal these pictures, but you, you can see it goes in the right way. There is only one problem, that the distance between these columns is only two meter 80 by four meters 50 because you could you could make the uh, the columns only on the edge of the CLT panel. You cannot go further, and who can use uh, a column grid of 280 by 450? It's too narrow. It's good for this building, which will always be probably a student home, but you cannot make offices in this building or maybe even rooms for for lectures or things like that. So let's have a look at over the shoulder to the reinforced concrete people. They do it like that. Column, slab, finished, that's all. So we said, we want to do the same. And then we said, okay, if we want to do the same, we have to, to say exactly what is it, what actually do we want to do. And we, we set uh, 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 some requirements, some targets for us to develop something from the target. And the first thing was a column grid of eight by eight meters. We faced several times exactly this, this requirement. We couldn't have anything, couldn't, couldn't answer with a timber solution. Life load of five kilonewton per square meter, a flat slab, it should be point supported, multi-axial or like this, um, um, not, not just the only axial load bearing. And if it's possible, timber only, no steel, no concrete. Uh, this was the, the target, and now I can show you what we did out of that. We are rather free. We are not a produ uh, production company, so we, we don't have to, to use CLT, or you don't have to use screws, we don't have to use glue. We can just choose what we find on the market and put it together if it's possible. We took uh, uh, some partners around us, which were, of course, TimberTech, which is an engineering company, Schilliger Holz, which is the uh, biggest sawmill and CLD produce, producer in Switzerland. Henkel, which is a uh, former poor bond company. It's the same company, just the name change. They, they are part of the, of the Henkel uh, company. They're also here. Her, her booth is, is uh, signed Loctite. And we have the ETH in Zurich and Berner Fachhochschule for research institutes and schools. And we had some grants from the government with these partners, we started into this research project. And we see, we said, what is the thing who scares us most? 
What scared us most was the column head. The forces, the, this uh, um, stresses <coughs> around the column head, if you calculate that, the, the forces are too high. The forces of, uh, of uh, rolling shear and everything is too high. So we did uh, quite a lot of research and lots of tests. And to the next slide, there is about two years and about $250,000 uh, to, to achieve there, we, in the end, made these um, column heads to see what they, uh, they are like and what, uh, what forces we bring out of them. You see the, the setup for the tests. We had here a, a hydraulic cylinder and here these um, steel rods on eight sp spots. From the top it looks like that. Here were the steel rods and underneath was the, the hydraulic cylinder. We pressed upward and we saw what happened in that inside this column head. You see that here now you have these, these gaps which started from here and then wandered outward and we cut this in pieces afterwards and we saw there is a triangle going down here and just this triangle was wandering, wandering, wandering and we didn't get a breakthrough so we had really a, a very ductile curve and the results were impressing. The results were we had to achieve uh, about 690 kilonewton, and we had 115 with the with this, the, uh, the slimmest uh, column head. We went up to 3,100 kilonewton, which is 310 tons. I never saw this value in a in a test with timber, so we were quite impressed and also convinced this solution will work, even if the rolling shear is is far lower. And we, we tried to find out why is that the rolling shear was, was um, that the, the, the column had cracked in rolling shear, but it was wandering out uh, to the outer regions here. And here there was more material and it stopped cracking. So never mind, we can, we can make that and we can achieve these high values. So we knew now, ah, hang on, you see here this, uh, we always make a hole to transform, to, to transmit the forces from the higher story, stories down into the next column. And uh, th this uh, slab is just lying on this little shoulder. So we said now we have these high performance column heads, but how can we transfer the high lateral forces from slab elements into these column heads? We call that column heads. You see that here? This is the plan. These uh, th black dots are the, the uh, the columns actually, the column grid, and the all around you have a higher stressed region and then you have these stripes of lower stressed regions and the green parts which are even lower stressed. So how do we connect these parts together? Uh, we were also here spreading out, finding many solutions, but in the end we said we should have, so have something with notches but with not, with, with, which we don't have to press together in, on the building site because it has to be precise and it's a lot of hassle to, to really bring it together. So we said we, we have something who draws back from the joint and no connection across the joint. We first tried just with finger joints and with a distance of six millimeters filled with a, with a strong material, which is a, a, a two component polyurethane glue from, from Henkel. And we achieved quite high values from 18 to 21 uh, megapascal. Remember, wood has 24 or 28, so we are pretty close. We're not quite there, but we're pretty close. So we said, okay, um, the crack is always on the end of the fingers, so do we really need these fingers? Let's try something without fingers. So we did that, and you see that here, we just made this butt joint and made also tests with it. A small series, just 12 tests, but we saw from 14 to 17 uh, megapascal we are a little lower, but still in the region where we can achieve high values. So we said, okay, let's develop that. We think this is a very important development. We made thousands of tests. Now we have uh, 1,200 tests in about 19 series, and we had values from 1.2 up to 21 megapascal. So we, work, we come closer and closer to this value we want to achieve. 20, okay. So, we made tests, um, also bending tests, long-time bending tests with climate to see 
how it works there, and it was <coughs> quite good. We, were, we could um, repeat these values of about 21 megapascal. We made fire tests as well. You see the, the joint is higher than the surrounding wood. That means if you, have, uh, if you know how to calculate the wood, then the joint is OK. We also made large fire tests. You see that here, support, support here, a large CLT panel, and here are the joints. Here is the, the furnace with the heat, and here is the hydraulic cylinders. We reloaded it with uh, 3.2 tons, and with a distance of 5 meters 30, we had we had achieved about 69 minutes of fire um, duration time. So we said, okay, this is good. But joint bonding of timber, this is something very interesting. Um, we can use that, and we call it timber structure three. Why timber structure three? We said it's the third generation of timber construction. First generation, you take the tree, you cut it down, chop off the branches, and use it as round or rectangle. Second, you slice it up to planks and machine them, dry them, finger joint, and so on, and produce glue lamb or CLT. Third generation, end of grain bonding, you can use it for lamellas or, for example, for CLT panels. What can we do with that now? And what, why, is it, why do we call that timber structure three? Uh, I will see a variety of possibilities. One is you can make beams of any length. You can make a beam of 200 meters length. You can make continuous slabs of any size up to column grid up to 8 by 8 meters. That's where we came from. You can even add so many stories because the slab is not interested in what, ho what forces come through these holes. So you can make high rise with this thing, with very, very low story heights and still the full access to this story. You can make diaphragm walls. You can even make angles with this technology. For example, you can use it for simple fold structures. You can also use it for complex structures like this one. You can make bridges out of it. You can even connect curved um, um, panels. For example, like this. If you have somebody, there is a producer in, in Europe, in Austria, who makes these um, curved CLT. Then you can produce round structures. You can make 3D cell structures. You can even make freeform structures, like these forms you see. So basically, everything you can imagine, you can try trace back to a rod or a plate, straight or curved, you can make with TS3. And to transport it in pieces of two and a half meters width. I want to short show you some projects we did already. This is one garage. Sorry? Okay, yes. You see that? One big plate, six by nine meters. This is the joint. This is the weight we added to test it compared to the computer sign. And we made one more, um, one more um, project. You see here, bring in the glue. And this is what, we, what I want to show you. This is a panel of 10 by 10 meters. So I think I stop here. It's good. Uh, we will see afterwards if you have some questions. Thank you very much.